Are you saying you've never watched porn, Andy? A friend of a friend of a friend. Uh, now, who are we kidding? I mean, porn is fantastic. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> oh, wait. Damn it. All right, that's the open. 34, 36, baby. Come on. Really? Big dogs are in the house! A fun ride. Bye, Felicia. Here's inside the lane, prize lamp. Oh, good bird punch! Oh, my goodness! Where did he come from? A behind the back camp by the big team. This is not Detroit, man. This is the Super Bowl. Ain't nobody got time for that. Practice like this. F*** up. We f*** up. Cash, homie. And boom goes the dynamite. Clocks here are bullshit, so. Home run! Welcome back, Lou Collins! Welcome back to Thunderdome for yet another hashtag vote for Dozier, the terrorists will win edition of Andy Must Die at Minnesota Sports Talk. Kinda. I'm your not so humble co-host at Andy Carlson Show on the Twitter machine, writing shock of my partner in crime, a woman who called Amy Winehouse a lush. Wait, no, lightweight. The other way around to that joke. <laughs> at Di Murphy MN. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Uh, I wrote that joke in like two seconds. I didn't even think. Uh, it was like, eh, normal person mean, will call her lush. Yeah. You didn't. You didn't even actually like really work that out, did you? You just kind of. Or was it the delivery? Like, you wrote it right, but then well, the no, delivery it, was... No, I put lush instead of lightweight. A woman who called Amy Winehouse a lightweight. Right. Yeah. But that's it, not how you delivered it. Because it's implied that you, you drink and do pills and snort. Right. All the time. Stuff. That's what I do. Yeah. Uh, and that's that because I actually liked Amy Winehouse. Uh, we're on the Twitter at Andy Must Die uh, and more other hard-hitting sports talk in there. AndyMustDie.com. So, die. How's it going? In this dog days of summer where there ain't hmm <laughs> going on. Yeah, it's it's kind of sucks, actually. I mean the we the women's, you know, soccer tourney is over, they won. Woohoo! Yeah. Um come on now. We don't even need to I know. On that I, now see I am excited because it's USA USA, but uh, 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 all right, so we'll get into this right away. Uh there was an article on Deadspin where it points out like uh, women in pro American pro soccer make forty times less than MLS men, and it's and it's kind of like what we've already talked about. It's like, you know, if sponsor money was there, if ticket revenue was there, it would get paid out, but it's not. All know? right, I mean, you go to a Lynx game, and it I, I will tell you, it is way more fun to watch mm. a Lynx game than it is to watch a Timberwolves game, and I love the Timberwolves, but the basketball is so much pure, and they just, it's just, the environment is so much more family-friendly, and it's not just people, you know, showing up to try and be seen. Um, I was just at a, a Lynx game, and but yeah, the whole, I mean, the whole upper level is basically not used, and so, I mean, I get it. I mean, I understand the financial aspect of it, but it still sucks. Yeah, and I've gotten the, uh, a couple of suggestions on Twitter where it's like, well, why why can't uh, uh, the the men's professional league supplement the the women's professional leagues? And I'm just like, you know, I, I'm a free market guy as it is, and then subsidies of the whole deal. It's just like, nah. And, and plus, uh, the, by the way, the o- owners and the uh, the unions of the men's team, the men's league will absolutely fight tooth and nail for every single dollar it's sent. Get it twisted, and it's just like uh, I understand the WNBA and the NBA are a package deal to a degree, and if they want to go to sponsors or even sell ticket packages, where it is a package deal, like say you buy you know, half a season worth of season tickets for the Wolves, you get a, that includes a quarter of the links and is priced accordingly. Uh, then I could see a little synergy, cross promotionalism going there, and same way with. Selling on advertisers like a Mayo Clinic. Uh, I know they're doing stuff with both teams, but 
they could have been like, hey, Mayo Clinic, sponsor the Wolves and sponsor Lynx. Here's the price. Let's let's do this. And that could be a way to, uh, hey, use the word like st- uh, stimulate, stim- stimulate, or prop up <laughs> prop up the the uh, the WNBA using the NBA, where you're not directly taking uh, revenue and profit from the men and giving it to the women's league. You know. I do, and I understand your point, and I and actually I do agree with you. Um, it's just some of them. I mean, they, it's just so much money. Like mm-hmm. it's just like you can't share a little bit. I mean, you know, like you said, form some sort of partnership and go about it that way. Peck has to get paid, son. Oh God, don't even get me started on that complete bullshit. <laughs> God, I just I was I was screaming. Please don't give him that contract. Please. Uh, same thing with uh, Backstrom of the Wild. I'm like, no. Please don't do that. And then, of course, what do they do? They go and do the exact opposite of what I tell them to do, which is generally not a very smart thing to do. But, you know, whatever. I mean, now they're stuck with it. So, But uh, yeah. l- let's bring it back full circle to the, the Women's World Cup. Uh, and I-, I love any sort of sport that's national, whether it be World Cup, Olympics, when it's a whole USA, USA, us versus them thing. Uh, I'm absolutely all for it. And, you know, women's soccer is, is no different. And it's awesome the way we completely beat the hell out of my native land, Japan, it was great. Well, and the fun, and I saw this on Twitter, and it was like, you know, women just women's professional sports just aren't as tough as men's or something. And it's like it shows a women's soccer player basically bleeding like from her face, and like just continuing to play, like wipes it off, goes back in, and then they show Christian on Cristiano Ronaldo, who is you know big, or maybe you don't if you don't follow, but he's he's a big soccer star. He's a big <clears throat> passe. Yeah, he's he's ridiculously gorgeous, but he is the biggest wuss. I mean, he so the so basically the defender barely touches his neck, and he goes down like someone has literally like broken his nose off. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, are you kidding me right now? Did you saw? Did you watch when the two women like uh, was it against Germany when they bumped heads and like they were both like bleeding and they both stayed in? I mean, if that had been a guy, they'd be like you know crying on the sidelines for their mommy. Well, maybe in the Premier League, but in like World Cup Olympic action where it's like National Pride online, eh, you suck it up. What was it? Uh, Neymar was he? Didn't he break his back in the Men's World Cup? The little Brazilian dude. I don't know. I really yeah. was. I really only watched the women. Oh, oh, oh! Come on. Now, so you you absolutely hate on the well. It's kind of understandable because the women's team actually you know wins. Well, men's, right. Men's team, eh, <laughs> not so much. Yeah, exactly. But why do you think that is? Why, you know, soccer hasn't really taken hold the way that soccer snobs wanted to, but why do you think the women have been so dominant, the American women have been so dominant, whereas the men's are completely lacking behind the rest of the world? Because, I mean, it's not like women's soccer isn't as popular in the rest of the world as men's soccer. I mean, soccer is global. It is, It's and it's the biggest global sport. I mean... Mm-hmm. It's totally second tier here for the most part, but everywhere else, it's like, a, it's huge, huge. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know. I'm assuming it's probably similar to like it is over you know, in the United States with men's and women's. Uh, wait, I, I got it. What? I, I know why. Okay. Lay it on me. There's no f- uh, professional football or professional baseball equivalent for women. Right. So like all of like the the major female American athletes um, you know, who have great athletic talent, uh, if they want to aspire to be a professional player, which there are professional leagues in uh, soccer leagues in America and that can go over play in Europe as well, uh, they focus all of their time and energy on soccer. That's why we have such a great soccer product, whereas if you're an American male and you have a short of athletic talent, you focus on football, you focus on baseball, you focus on basketball, and soccer is like that, uh, yeah, the thing you play in the summer uh, to stay in shape once in a while. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, that's basically what it is. It's, yeah. it's, there's not a whole lot of competition as far as, you know, for women. Although I would watch the hell out of a uh, professional women's football league where it's not like shtick, like the lingerie football league. That is where, so freaking ridiculous. Or whatever like they stupid. renamed it now. But yeah, if there's like a legit 11 on 11 outdoor women's football league, I would watch the hell out of it. It probably yeah. be pretty good. Well, I mean, when I was in high school, we had um, powder puff football. 
I mean, it, it can't be worse than like junior college or D3 football. Probably not. I realize I'm throwing a lot of shade on like tons of Minnesota schools, including uh, my own, but eh, whatever. Yeah, well, I went to St. Thomas, so. <laughs> Stop it right now. Uh, now, how much scholarship did you get? Or I didn't were... have any scholarship. Oh. Nope. Wait, so mom and dad student loans what are we talking about no here? actually and i will be totally honest and i thought we we might have talked i think we might have talked about this on your uh your dad podcast um rich uncle. my parents what rich dad uncle no What'd my parents pa- my parents paid for my college and so oh. my husband and i are paying for our children's college because it really i mean especially given how much co- it costs now i mean mm-hmm. it, it's ridiculous so for that, for us to give them the best start possible for them to get a good education, and I and I don't care where they go. I mean, I want them to be happy. I'm not saying, oh, well, you have to go to St. Thomas, or we're not going to pay for it. My husband went to the U, so um, it's just we don't want them behind that financial eight ball. And my kids are smart and they get good grades, but my husband and I make make way too much money for them to get you know, financial aid, (laughs) stop it. You have to make almost nothing to get financial aid, really seriously. Or be a minority, baby. Come on. Okay, well, neither one of us are that, so there you go. Um, So, yeah, we're just trying to give them the best start in life possible not have that crushing student loan debt. Mm -hmm. And and plus, since you're you're saving up a nice little nest egg, um, when they go to Hedenpen County Community College, you'd be like, baby, we're buying a boat. My husband is so pale. Like, there's no way we'd be hanging out on a boat. Like, we'd have to go through, like, gallons of sunscreen. And also, uh, the the whole minority thing, it's kind of cool because, yeah, I got a nice little stipend, nice little mini scholarship as a work for culture diversity when I was in school. So my daughter, who is obviously half Asian and also half wife, the wife is Caucasian, interracial marriage, as they were called in the 50s. But uh, so... She's Margaret now, but when she goes to apply to colleges, she'll be like, oh, Margaret. <laughs> I'm sure that'll work like a charm. And actually, the recording might be uh, picking her up uh, in the other room now. The, the wife is uh, giving her a bath, so that's always fun. Oh, yeah. I miss bath time. That was kind of fun. I was like, go bathe yourself. You stink. Now, wh- which is better, baby bath time or dog bath time? Oh, dog bath time is way worse. What? Oh, God. My dog hates the bath. Like, we pay, we actually, we, I'll just take him to the groomers. I'm like, here, he needs a bath. Like, I don't even want to deal with it. Like, they run around the house, and they shake, and everything gets wet. And no. Mm-mm. Nope. Especially, well, right now, our dog's, like, 35 pounds. We used to have, like, a 90-pound golden retriever. Trying to mm-hmm. bathe that thing. Nope. Uh-uh. What happened to it? Did it join the military? What? The golden retriever. Oh, no, he died. Oh, Way to bring the mood down, Di. Way to go, Andy. Way to bring, way to bring that up. I can just ask a load of questions. Uh, we should probably talk a, a little bit of sports. Uh, All-Star Game is coming, and uh, from the intro, the whole vote, hashtag vote Dojer thing annoys the bejesus out of me. Mostly oh, because uh, uh, I, I don't care. <laughs> You're so bad. Yeah, I mean... It, all, all, all across the board, all across sports, the way they vote in all stars is so stupid. It's like it's a popularity contest, and the best guys don't necessarily and they don't necessarily get to go, which is crap. well. It, it, it's women, like in you know, the, the WNBA has it too, but well, it's like in the NBA voting when Yao Ming was like starting an all star game three years after he retired or something stupid like that. Or Michael Jordan, I'm pretty sure they were still voting him in too. Well, probably still do. Jo- Jordan was worth it, but. So no, I don't, and it's, I don't know. I mean, he's, yeah, I, he's, I, I, I don't get the campaign though, because, um, Yost has to pick someone from the twins because each team gets one, uh, a watered down version of everyone gets a trophy day. Uh, but, uh, it's going to be Dozier. So I mean, why the uproar? But we already have one. Perkins is going. Oh yeah, that's right. So, so completely yeah. scratch, uh, that other argument. And, and again, dog days and. So I, I really don't care. <laughs> I mean, I'll watch the All-Star game, or I'll watch the modified Home Run Derby, 
And yeah, that's about it. I won't watch any of it. I don't give a crap about any of it. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to stand up here and be like outraged because you don't care because I don't really care either. So, I don't, yeah. but I don't care about I, the one, the one all-star game that I enjoy, or at least the stuff surrounding the all-star game is the NBA. Like mm-hmm. when they do the dunk contest, you know, they do the three point shooting. I like watching that, but I won't, I probably don't. I mean, I don't watch the pro bowl. I mean, that's a complete joke. Everybody who's, kind of awesome, though. Everyone who's supposed to be in it, you know, is like, I'm hurt. I don't want to play. No, Kyle no, no. Rudolph, 2012 Pro Bowl MVP, baby. That's what got him the contract. Well, I'm just... And the tattoo. It paid for the tattoo. <laughs> oh, God. It just reminded me of Mike Zimmer and <laughs> just some of the stuff that he said at training camp. It was pretty funny. You're just talking about, oh, yeah, I, I, I see. It's been 10 years or something. Oh, no, that was the their OTAs video. He's like, oh, it was... To, Oh, no, it's to Greenway. He's like, oh, it's only been 10 years. Chad, I'm glad you picked that up now. Yeah, it's like because he made a play or something. But, mm. I mean, he's he's so funny. I mean, he's – I I would marry him if I weren't already married. That's how much I love that guy. I think half of Vikings Nation would marry that guy. Now, see, why why'd you have – die? you keep bringing down the, the, the tenor and, and the mood of the show because you, you know he's single. Well, I know he's single, but it's I'm a very, not. That's a very sad story about well, his wife dying. I, it is sad. Way to bring it. Way to be a Debbie Downer. How dare Whatever, you? Whatever, Andy. <laughs> uh, all right. So speaking of Greenway, uh, I got to talk to Greenway yesterday. It was good times. Well, fa fa fa. Oh, what do you mean fa fa fa? You're the one saying, "Oh, we make too much money." <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. You can you can't make too. You I mean you can make. If you make barely over like what you can do to like barely survive, you can't get scholarships unless you're like brilliant or academically or athletically gifted. Now, so, is, is this white person's burden? Um, no, there Cause, are because you can't get are, culture diversity scholarships. Well, no, I mean, are, are you sure you can't retrace? I'm I'm one thirty fifth uh, Iroquois. I don't know how that works out, but uh, it's in there. No, it's I wouldn't do that. Give us some money. Wouldn't do it. Nope. What if it's legit though? What if you were one uh, sixty fourth um, Sue? No, we can afford to send our kids to college. We should pay for it. It's for people who don't have that opportunity or have that advantage. So they're saying no to free money. Apparently, yes. How dare you? <laughs> That's un-American, die. <laughs> okay, fine. I've always All right. So speaking part. of free money, uh, that something that really annoys me is that uh, the neighbor couple down the street who um, we, we have verified through various sources is on welfare and unemployment and not like the welfare unemployment where something bad happened or an accident where the person couldn't work, but actually just like complete laziness or, and complete F of life. Uh, and they have two kids too. And they just got uh, direct TV. Priorities. I'm so glad that I could pay for their cable. This is getting really heavy and deep. We need not, to really, about- not, not really. It's not even really heavy and deep. It's just more annoying. Well, yeah, but it's, I don't know. I mean, these people exist. We all know they exist. There's plenty of them. But I don't want to talk about them. Let's talk about Chad Greenway. And mm, yeah. Chad is an awesome dude, by the way. He's very, pretty funny. Uh, very easygoing, very cool, like, uh, like if he wasn't a professional football player, he'd just be like that cool guy down down the street, Chad. Hey, Chad, Saturday, can you bring a truck around and help me move a, a sofa? Yeah, sure. All right. Hang out, crack a couple, chill, talk about life. Yeah, he seems great. And actually, um, the only – I mean, I, I saw him at training camp, obviously, but um, the only claim to fame I have as a connection to, to Chad Greenway is that his wife um, – more than once has kicked my ass at uh, a body uh, body pump class at the Y at, at Southdale. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's badass. So, oh, did you try and steal her purse or something? Nope, she's just. Oh, you mean in the class, not like physically no. like kicking her ass? Okay. Right in the class. Yeah, she was awesome. So I, I, yeah, I like him a lot too, and it was funny because. 
at training camp, there was this whole thing back and forth about we we had gone to Tav on the Ave down in Mankato. Yeah. And Chad actually happened to be there, and he saw Arif Arif Hassan um, from Vikings territory. And, uh, you, uh, you mean Art Fart? <laughs> right, I meant Art Fart. <laughs> anyway, Arif had just bagged on him like last year, and so it was like they had this moment where it was like, but it was like kind of kidding too, so it was cute. But yeah, it was funny. He seems like he's a great guy, and he does a lot, a lot in the community. So I think that's really cool. And he strikes me as the kind of guy who would still be doing that sort of work, uh, even if he wasn't famous, if even if he you know, didn't have a lot of money, where it's like in his DNA. It's like he's wired that way. Whereas you know, certain NFL players, uh, I feel like they only do good things or the publicists only set up good things and they make sure a camera crew's there. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yes. Lots of photo ops. Come on, kid. Right. Look at me yeah. with all these poor sick kids. And look at me making meals to send to poor families. And, yeah. It's, right, the, stuff so- that they, it's the stuff that they do when the cameras aren't around that really counts the most. And, all right, so not quite a smooth segue, but Russell Wilson, right? Oh, my God. Uh, now, I, I, actually, I, I actually like him. And I, I do believe that everything he does as far as charity work and being a good person is, like, legit him. Like, And he's like Greenway, where he'd be doing it if the cameras weren't even rolling. You know, that's just in his heart. But the whole he, – he's very PR savvy, and him and the, the people around him are very aware of, like, branding and making sure everything's polished and, like, Boy Scouty. And it – it creeps me out because you know how politicians always try to line themselves up to be like the squeaky, squeaky clean boy scout uh, the, with the blonde wife and the 2.5 kids. And they're all very well behaved, except they're always hiding something. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Because uh, they're human. Okay. I mean, that's the reality. They're human. Like, like Tiger Woods was that sort of PR polish besides, you know, cursing on the golf course before the whole, yeah. Thanksgiving. Crashing the Escalade, <laughs> his mansion thing, <laughs> and then e- Elon trying to take a nine iron to to his head like she was one hundred one oh eight out. Something Man, like that. you know what though? That was respect. Like I had a lot of respect for her. It was like, damn right, yeah, beat his ass. So that and, was and now she's yeah. got she's got like an island in Sweden with half a half a million dollars, and it's like, you go, girl. Well, yep. If I was single, I, I would date Elon Norgan. I'm just putting that out there. Okay. This is where you're supposed to be like, me too. Um, no, I would I would I would date Mike Zimmer. Yeah, Zimmer's cool and all, except uh he's not as hot as Elon Norgren and uh doesn't have half a million dollars on an island in Sweden. Yeah, uh eh, I mean she's hot. Yeah. Now see uh, the whole Russell Wilson thing and it, I don't know why it bugs me, it just does, you know what I mean? And then the whole, well, um, I'm going to play baseball if you don't give me $25 million guaranteed per year. <laughs> even it's, though I'm not even the top five quarterback in the NFL, I want to be the highest paid by $3 million and have everything guaranteed. It's like, it's almost like he had a lobotomy. Mm. I mean, it's just like, who are you? Like, it's so, it just seems so out of character. And, and that was, I just didn't know what to do with that. It's like. You are being completely ridiculous. The whole thing with him and the no sex thing, and like it's like, really? Well, and see, about, it, and about him, you know, God told him to lead her, and you know, it's like, oh my God, you are. And then after the interception, the Super Bowl, God was like, "What are you gonna do now? We gonna do Russell?" Question mark. And, and see, that's exactly what the whole no sex thing, because there was a reason that that interview got out and went viral as it did. Or why he even did the interview in the first place. Because, uh, I mean, that's perfectly fine. And I actually applaud him if he wants to do that. That's his personal choice. But, uh, of course, Russell Wilson being PR savvy as it is would you know put it out there. Just another notch on the, the good guy, Russell Wilson totem pole that is unassailable. And no one can talk bad about. Right. I, I mean, it, it, I just think he stepped in it. I mean, a lot of people are like, are you actually even kidding me right now? And it, it was about this whole, you know... And, and like you said, I people don't want to abstain from having sex till they're married. 
great, cool. I have no issue with that. That's I totally mm-hmm. respect that. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, he's kind of been not super good about that. And all of a sudden it, he is and, and he's making a big deal out of it. And it's like, I don't even know what he's trying to do. Well, see, all right. So to tangent off a little bit, but the whole sex before marriage thing. All right. Now this is not meant to be, uh, what, what's it called? It's not to set a bad example for my daughter. Like she's not going to date till she's 40 anyways, but, not having sex before you're married is very much akin to buying a house or a car without even looking at it. You know what I mean? All right. It's like buying uh, a pair of shoes without it, actually wearing them. Like if you're going to buy a house, well, we'll just go with the house one. You're going to want to tour a few houses, kind of check out the square footage, you know, see if it's your style as opposed to just plunking down some cash and going through escrow sight unseen. You know what I mean? Because it uh, might be a rotten house. Might be terrible. Might be, you know, might have some foundation crack issues. Well, and the thing is, I mean, whether have people want to... Have sex before marriage. Well, I, the thing is, whether people want to admit it or not, sex is a huge part of a marriage. It's not everything. Mm-hmm. It's not all of it. It eventually becomes less, if you're unfortunate. But, you know, it's it's a huge part of connecting with your partner. So, yeah, I don't get it. I, yeah, we'll just move on from that. I'm just going <laughs> to. Well, all right. So die. How many house tours did you go on before you, you, you we purchased? Are, we are not having that conversation. I actually asked Chad the same question. <laughs> and he said, what, two, three. I, don't know, I, I congratulate him on being six foot two though. That's it, it, in my world of being five foot eight. That's quite an accomplishment. Yeah, I know. My my I just took my son to the doctor and he's so at he he'll, he'll be 13 next month and he's at 5 feet right now. So he's 3 inches shorter than me and he's growing at like an inch and a half a year. So he's dying to be taller than me. It's like so yeah, I get it. I mean, I get the height thing. Now see the thing is I I, I don't know if that's tall or not. What? 5 foot for a 13 year old? I I don't know if that's big, small. What? He's pretty up there. I mean, I, I think that it's kind of like a puppy. You know how when puppies have, like when I had our golden retriever, he had huge paws, but he was this little puppy. Yeah. My son wears a size 10 men's shoe. Is that a lot? For a 12-year-old? I suppose. I thought my, you my said he's 13. Six two, my husband's 6'2". He wears a size 12. So, I mean, I think, you know, they're growing into it. Both my kids have huge feet huge heads. I, I gave him, I gave him mini me one of my old twins hats today. Mm-hmm. I just handed it to her. I'm like, okay, let's adjust it for you. I put it on her head fit perfectly. It's like, I have ginormous children and I'm just really glad I didn't actually have to, I had C-sections with both of them. And I am very, very glad for that. All right. So speaking of surgery, I, I said, I wanted to talk about fake breasts and uh, you, you're a good sport and I, I'll tie this in somehow. So uh, I was in the gym today and uh, I just had this ra- really random thought that men and women can both, you know, work out and you know, focus on certain areas of their body and, and make it, uh, you know, be healthy and, you know, make themselves look very appealing to the opposite sex. You know, men with the whole biceps and six pack and blah, 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 and women uh, with that ass. But uh, on, on men and women, there is one body part that cannot be developed without surgical intervention. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's all right. So I just think overall cosmetic surgery is complete crap, right? So the Botox, the liposuction, the, the rhinoplasty, as long as it's completely for vain and cosmetic reasons, where it's not like you, know, you have a deviated septum, septum where it's hard to breathe, obviously that's okay. Or if you have a cleft palate, I mean, I'm, that that's that's all good in the hood. But if you're just getting like fake boobs or uh, a nose job just to you know fit in with the Hollywood Joneses, uh, ain't no one got time for that. But I mean, if you have like an unusually large nose and it's just 
it it makes you self-conscious. I mean, I don't see what's wrong with altering that a little bit. It's those people that get like a million surgeries and then they don't even look human. It's like, yeah, exactly. What the hell is like, you don't even look like a person. You look like mm. a mannequin or something like some weird freaky. And there's been so, like, um, God, what was it? The, the, the show with the surgery where they would do like nip tuck. No, extreme makeovers, like extreme. Uh, oh, my gosh. And those half the time, those people didn't even look like real people. Mm -hmm. And that's creepy. Now, see, I'm not talking about like lap band surgery where you need to lose 200 pounds to survive. But I am talking about straight up liposuction because that just seems like uh, the lazy way out. You didn't earn it. Whereas you know, I, I do like seeing people who you know put in time at the gym. You know, you know they look good. Uh, and you know they earned that. Whereas liposuction, you you paid some money, you got knocked out, and then they suck some fat out of you. Well, and the thing with liposuction, I've same heard same with the is, fake titties. Well, with liposuction, I've heard that it just grows back in another part of your body. So it's that it doesn't you know unless you change your habits, it does. It's not going to help. Yeah, exactly. Um, you didn't change anything, and you didn't. You don't have any more muscle. But there are, especially for women, and especially over forty, um, it's really hard to get completely like a like a completely flat stomach or yeah especially after you have kids your body completely goes crazy it's not that you can't do it and and you know genetics plays a lot in it too in hereditary and you know so I, I just think that if you're doing if you're working out and it's not you're getting you the results that you want if you supplement with a little bit of surgery I don't really have a huge issue with that um, it's just like you said, if you're just like, ah, I just want to eat cheeseburgers and sit on my ass on the couch and just have you suck the fat out of my ass. Well, that's not really what it's designed to be for. Like, that's not the whole point. So, yeah, I kind of get it. And it, it, talking about the whole uh, excuse thing, you know, like you mentioned about you know, people can be genetically uh, you know, predisposed to being o obese or heavier set. Uh, this is quite a departure from from big boobs. Let's go. But let's go for it. Well, I guess eh, they would have big boobs. But anyways, uh, uh, that's fine. That's completely understandable. Like they have a glandular issue or something like that. But uh, I really hate it when people use that as an excuse for why they can't lose weight or can't succeed or anything like that. It's kind. All right. So this is gonna go really deep. This is the deep episode. You know, last week was a lighthearted episode, right? Uh, so. In the country with the deal with minorities, right? And th there are certain sections of uh, minorities who use their minorityism as an excuse of why they can't get ahead, whereas there's other groups of minorities that just work and bust their ass and succeed, even though they are minority, and they don't even think about it. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking about like a Asian Americans, not to suit my own horn, because I'm not really Asian American. Uh, like Indian Americans and uh, let's be frank, you know, Mexican Americans come in, bust their ass for the American dream. I would take a million hardworking Mexicans who want to pay taxes into this country over a million suburban 15 and 16 year olds who play Xbox 16 hours a day. Come on. That seems like a fair trade. Yeah, no, I'm not against Send that them down to Mexico. <laughs> Por qué? Nice. Porque tú es muy lazy, Aiden. I don't, I don't know what lazy -E is. A-Y-D-E-Y-N. I don't know whatever. what lazy is in Spanish. <laughs> you know, I took two years of Spanish in high school, and the only thing I, I can remember is donde está el baño and uh, uno cerveza, por favor. Porque tú es muy, muy bonita y uh, mi... Uh, Feo. I'm a, you're beautiful. I'm, I'm a, right. And I, I actually picked that up. I, I actually remember that. And I could do some colors too, but I mean, yeah, it's nothing. You can only do black. How <laughs> dare you die? How dare you? Wow. All right, so that, that is the only fake breast to uh, minority and immigration <laughs> issues was, in, in this country. <laughs> that was a hell of a transition, Andy. Way to go. It has nothing to do with sports. But you know what? The whole fake boob thing is that. I mean, and there's a point where it's just like, those are just, those puppies are just too damn big. Like, you know, yeah. and it's, and I get that it's like, you know, 
people who work in the adult entain- entertainment industry that generally have those like ginormous boobs. Mm. But like they're they're a pain in the ass. I mean, you can't find clothes that fit. You have to wear like three bra sports bras when you exercise. You know, you have a tendency for men to like talk to your boobs instead of your face. It's just they're not all that cracked up to be. So, you know, yeah. maybe plus maybe, uh I, I I've heard this. I've heard it through the grapevine. Someone has told me that the popularity in like natural the girl next door type of pornography or adult films is taking precedent over you know what used to be the bleach blonde giant fake boob porn. Know what I mean? Well, I mean, know what I mean, Vern? I, I mean, I, I guess it's a good. My, thing. Uh, I've heard that fourth hand. Are you saying you've never watched porn, Andy? A friend of a friend of a friend. Uh, no, who are we kidding? I mean, porn is fantastic. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> oh, wait. Damn it. All right, that's the open. 34, 36, baby. Come on. Really? Yeah. <laughs> nice. That uh, I mean, that's what's going to sell. All right, so. Enough name names. But what was the first... When was the first time you saw a piece of adult entertainment erotica. This is the best episode ever, by the way. Um, This has nothing to do with sports. I don't even know what we're doing here. We're just making shit up as we go along because their sports are dead in this town, basically. We've already talked about, like, you know, whatever. All right. Um, I was probably 16. Now, do you remember what it was? Was it on... Uh... Was it the real to real? No. It was like you know when um, so Cinemax like when they used to have, like scramble their channels. Yeah. But they weren't really scrambled. Yeah. Yeah, that was what it was. Todd, do you, could you make anything out? Oh yeah, of course. Otherwise, like why watch? So all right. So the first time was it fun for you? Were you disgusted? Were you kind of? Intrigued? <laughs> I was like, oh. Did, did you bust out the resume? Write up a cover letter? No. <laughs> Send it to Vivid. That has never been an Which I've heard is a purveyor of adult material. That has never been an aspiration of mine. I have a brain in my head and I don't I don't need to use my body to, to make money. Thank God, because I would be broke and poor and really like malnourished. So Die. Die. Come on. You're bonita. I, I don't know how we're going to make the transition, but the Wolves are having <laughs> a inner, is... inner, squad, inner squad scrimmage this evening. Yeah, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of, yeah. Moving on. Called? Now. Do you know who's Bonita? Who? Shabazz Muhammad. He's the best looking ninth man in the league. You know, he's, oh, mm, he's a good looking man. Yeah, you know, it's weird. Uh, all right, so if you're a single. Like your husband and the kids went off to live with Elon Norgren at her island in Sweden and half a million dollars. I and would the kids beat her like, ass. And the kids were like, "Do you have Wi-Fi?" Well, and food. Do you have Wi-Fi and food? Because and a thirteen-year-old, that's all that matters to him. All right, Wi-Fi say, and food. Say they're both on the table. They're like, "Die, let's do this." Zimmer or Bazi Muhammad? Oh, I'd have to go Muhammad. He has a smile that, like, oh, my God, it's to die for. He's just so, yeah. Now, is it just because he makes, like, ten times more than Mike Zimmer? No. No. Is it because that he'll probably be around longer since he's way younger? Well, not even that, really, because, you know, you can always get another one. Uh All right. Who would be your top five right now, Dad? Top five for what? Top five, if you're a single, isms. Oh. Uh, let's go with sports. I mean, we, oh, we no, haven't had sports. Oh, no, I don't want to do just sports. Okay, fine. I mean, fine, just sports open. and entertainment. All right. Because I can't leave out Channing Tatum. Well, uh, you get about sports and entertainment, but I was like, man, is she going to list like her neighbor or something? No. That would that'd be awkward. Terry from down the street. <laughs> There's a good-looking guy. I've tried his quiche. <laughs> 
Give me a call when your wife steps off the curb right. and gets hit Ooh, by no. a bus. It could be tied in sports because Channing Tatum was in Coach Carter. Okay, but also Chris Hemsworth. Although he was in the racing movie. Oh, yeah. Which, which was... Okay. I, I, never saw, kinda, I never saw that. I think it was a little overrated. Was he shirtless oh. in that? Uh, yes. Okay, then I will see that. Yes. So, yeah. Channing Tatum. And I'm, they're not in any order. Channing Tatum... Uh, Chris Hemsworth, Shabazz Muhammad. Um, oh, uh, oh God. Who is, I just was tweeting about him. Um, uh, Vikings player. I'm like, how come nobody told me he was what? this hot? Sandejo? No, new guy. Anthony Harris? Uh, no. Damn it. I'm trying to get around my tweet. Tyrus Thompson, you like him big? Was it Babs? It was not Babs. He is just a no. He scares me. He could, yeah, no. Mm-mm. All right, damn it. All right, so now I got Google the Viking. I'm looking rookies. right now. I'm going through all my tweets. Is it Kendricks? You like the you like the Samoan? No, hair? it was um, Hunter. Oh, Daniil. Yeah. Or Danielle, I, as you'll call you, him. How in the hell do you? I don't even care that he has a girl's first name. I, no, saw, well, I saw him without a shirt on. Yep. Well, you know, that was the whole thing about uh, when, when he was drafted in the third round, like the, the Daniil Hunter arm memes came out because the dude is freaking jacked. I don't care if he only got four and a half career sacks. He was, he was just be the first guy off the bus, him and Babs. He's just ridiculously jacked. All right, so that's four. I need one more. Um, hmm. This Harrison Smith. Me. So no Parisi? You know, he's super like pretty, but I like big like I like a big guy. And he's not a big guy. No Charlie Hunnam. Oh shoot. Can I have six? That's fine. Well, okay. yeah, Charlie Hunnam and Harrison Smith, I think, are the same person, anyways. <laughs> Except for Charlie Hunnam has that those those that flow that you know. No, like, no, like uh, it was a season three when, in Sons of Anarchy when they just got out of prison and Jack said short hair. Uh, I swear to God, if Harrison grew a goatee, they would be twins. I did not like that. And I, I, I do not like long hair on men. And I mean, um, it's not like hugely long, but he, his character totally needed that hair. I'm very sad that that is over, by the way. Well, don't act like it's not coming back because you know, TV sucks right now. Uh, yeah, but I mean, Kurt Suter's working on something else. No, the, uh, you know what, Suter? Let, let's just call your show what it is. It, it's a great soap opera, and it's a soap opera. It has a motorcycle game. So why don't we run it like a soap opera five days a week for 36 years, like days of our lives? I would watch it. I would, too. I really would. I think he'd probably get tired of it. I, I just think it's too much work. But, yeah, his next project... Um, it's actually like some sort of medieval uh, time period with, um, it's, I think it's called the Bastard Executioner. You should look that up. But And Katie Seagal is going to be in it too because, you know, they're married. Ugh. What, she's, she's everything. Huh? She's in all of his stuff. Well, I mean, yeah, it's your wife. She's hot. Yeah, she's hot. And she, she was pretty good in Sons of Anarchy, except she got really annoying towards the end. Like, Jack should have, in the pilot, Jack should have just popped her in, like, the first 10 minutes. <laughs> no, Gemma was the, the the straw that stirred that drink. She was all over. I mean, the whole the whole thing fell apart, basically, because of Gemma. You know, Kurt Sutter is a vegan? I did not. Just saw that on Wikipedia. The joys of Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we need to bring this back to sports a little bit. Oh, I talked to your boy, uh, Venzel, Monday. Oh, yeah. I, I I meant to listen to it, and I haven't had a chance yet. But did you say I said hey? Uh, I, I did uh, off the recording, yeah. <laughs> and what did he say? She's batshit crazy. I have no idea why I'm following her. Uh, we uh, kind of a fun conversation about Twitter. And, uh, yeah, he, he's pretty good spirit about uh He knows that... Uh, uh, he's the guy who likes to bust balls, except he understands that it doesn't always translate uh, on Twitter. 
and yeah, the the Twitter mob is very active, as it were. Well, and you know, he's become a kinder, gentler Matt Bensel. Mm-hmm. I think since you know we we had our little falling out, I think he's he even said to me like he unfollowed a bunch of people and or he refollowed a bunch of people or unblocked them. I think it was, but um, then I was hard on him, but he you know there just there were times that he was a real ass. So, and I just think when you're in that position, you kind of have to try to, granted, I know you have people that are being assholes to you all the time. And I, you know, I get that, but you kind of have to try and take the higher ground when you are in a position that he is in. So, and I think he's kind of figured that out and that's what he's, he's trying to do, but it would be hard. I would hate for people to come after me. I mean, when I've written stuff for Daily Norseman and I've had like some of the comments and I'm like, wow, okay. Because I don't, I generally don't write fluff. I generally write stuff that are either going to, people are going to really agree with, or they're going to really hate. And, you know, that's the price you pay. See, I I love people who just like show up and just to be mean and antagonistic and not even like a funny way. Like I'll I'll be like slightly mean, but in a, a joking slash comedic sort of fashion, or at least it sounds funny in my head. But the people who go on there, like, say you write an article, and they're like, Die, why don't you get off your high horse? And then I hope the horse kicks you right in the ribcage, and then you actually die, comma, die. <laughs> that actually, I have not actually gotten that comment, but, you know, close. Uh, there was a, a good one uh, for uh, something on Vikings uh, territory. I forget what it was, though. But it, no, it was, damn it, now I kind of want to look it up. But it, it was a classic, and now I'm kind of. Sad that I missed it. Uh, uh, I mentioned this on Twitter a couple weeks ago, or it might have been a month ago, but I actually got my first death threat via email. <laughs> I remember I'm like, oh. that. I was like, what took so long? You've arrived, Andy Carlson. The You've guy didn't arrived. even mask his IP address. So, I mean, yeah, it's not like I'm going to turn it in because I, I ain't scared. You know, in a reef gets some doozies too. It's like art fart. <laughs> now, see, I. I I'm surprised that more of a Reese mentioned don't go racial because I feel like stupid people like the first thing that they do go for is racial because it's so on the surface and they can't think of anything better. Oh yeah. Or, or, sure. fem- or, fe- or female female is probably worse. Oh yeah. <laughs> it is. It really is. I mean, I have a vagina, therefore I can't possibly know well, anything well, 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 well. about sports. For real? That's I've been oh. told that. Yes. Did you get a second opinion from your doctor? <laughs> no. Sorry. All right. What What is actually the worst comment you've gotten? Oh gosh. Um. I mean, I've had people tell me I should, you know, be in the kitchen cooking dinner, or you know, why I'm, why you know, why. Well, what, that's what just because people... they follow your timeline. They're hungry. <laughs> well, it is some good stuff. By the way, I bought a waffle maker, a Belgian waffle maker. It's about damn I'm, time. I'm all about like everything I can make with waffles. So that's what you have to look forward to on my timeline because this weekend I think I'm going to do chicken and waffles. Bam! That sounds freaking fantastic. I know. I'm so excited. I, I, I'm a gigantic fan uh, of chicken and waffles. Like people, don't, Some people don't get it, but I'm like, you're combining fried chicken with a waffle. What, what's that to get? I, Sweet and savory. I've never had chicken and waffles. What? Never. I feel like half of your timeline should like slap you now. Probably, but I'm changing that because I'll make my own. Well, uh, and this isn't doesn't involve a ton of cooking, but with your waffle maker, you should get uh, like the like the Pillsbury cinnamon rolls, <gasps> oh. and then just put them on there. And I've seen baby, that. yeah, on Pinterest. Pinterest it is it. like the best place to go for recipes. They had like, I was looking at recipes, just like waffle recipes, and it's like cinnamon apple waffles. There was one that was like, a, you make the, the waffle out of cornbread mix, and you like like a chili cornbread waffle, and like, it, oh, just, you know, banana chocolate chip waffle, and yeah, like some really good stuff on here. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Seriously, like... Bacon waffles. I mean, uh, yeah. Well, what's going to be the first thing you're going to make besides like a, like the sweet waffle? Like what are we talking about for savory wise? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't, 
pin too much stuff yet. I just kind of sort of pulled it up today and was just kind of looking around. So I'll have to figure out kind of what, um, there was one that was a mashed potato cheddar and chive waffle, mm -hmm. which sounds kind of good, like as a side dish. Um, of course there's all kinds of like grilled cheese, bacon kind of sort of things with it. But yeah, there's, Oh, Oh, there was a Monte Cristo waffle sandwich. Um, there was like a bacon cheeseburger waffle sandwich where you put like some ground hamburger and the bacon cheese. Oh yeah. So, you know, I'm making myself hungry and right, I've already. You eaten. And you're talking about food. Uh, all right. So I looked up the bastard executioner Yeah. and the star is going to be something called Lee Jones as Wilkin Brattle. And I looked him up pretty good looking dude. Uh, could go the Charlie Hunnam route where you take a completely unknown guy Toss them in as your lead, and then becomes a big star. Well, yeah, I mean, but you know, then you kind of think about like, what is Charlie Hunnam doing now? Like, he turned Living down off the, his money. <laughs> well, he turned down the Fifty Shades of Grey, which I have a tremendous amount of respect for because that that was just trash, complete garbage. And now they have like a spinoff. Like, so we had it told from her perspective. Now that idiot author is writing something from his perspective, and it's like. It is some of the worst writing I've ever read in my entire life. Like even skipping ahead to to the so uncalled like so called good parts. No, it was a, it was complete trash. And so I'm still. Well, she uh, um, did uh, ask uh, whatever her name is on Twitter, and it came out with awesome responses. I can't even. Where it's like, uh, is this next book going to be from the point of view of someone who can actually write? <laughs> and things like that. Oh yeah, that guy that's starring that Lee Jones, he's kind of a hottie. Yeah, yeah. and uh, right, so Charlie Hunnam was in this one movie, and I'm looking up the the name now. Oh, I know, and I didn't see. I haven't seen. Oh, it, but... uh, three, two, one, Frankie Go Boom. That wasn't the one I was thinking of. He was it's actually a... a comedy where uh, Charlie Hunnam is kind of the loser little brother, uh, and uh, Chris O'Dowd. <laughs> Uh, I forget the 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 premise, but you know Chris O'Dowd, uh, the guy from Bridesmaids. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, the like the the Scottish or yeah, Irish like dude, him. whatever. Yeah, all right, so he's the older brother, and he films um, Charlie Hunnam, his little brother, having a, uh, a, a as like a sex tape. Oh, nice. Yeah, and he like put it on YouTube or something like that. Wow. Yeah. A anyways, you should probably find that because it's actually pretty good oh he was in cold mountain but he was in another one too it was like a space one or some sort of action one uh pacific rim yes there we go i didn't see it but oh he's gonna be a knights of the round table Ooh. king arthur he would make a good knight uh, let's see he's playing i don't care he's playing something else this has been a great sports show <laughs> I gotta tell you what. But you know, it's just it's this it's just this that's this is the worst time of year in Minnesota sports. I mean, not well, that I'm. You trying... always talk about the Lynx, so talk about the Lynx. What's going I, on with them? Hey, you know what? Maya Moore is, and I tweeted this. I'm like, watching Maya Moore play basketball is like watching LeBron James play basketball. And I didn't mean that she could literally go head to head with LeBron James because that would be stupid. But she is the LeBron James of of the WNBA. I mean, she does everything and she executes beautifully and she's i mean she's she's so clutch and i you know sometimes people um, but so she can saying, she can literally do it all so you're saying that maya moore is a six foot eight narcissist from akron i'm saying she's amazing she is pretty good uh i think she should win mvp sometime she's fantastic i mean it was that was your you your cue to tell me that she's won like three mvps well, I thought you meant like going forward, but yeah, oh. she's get she's legit. She's got rings. She's got like she's like LeBron. She got James. She got rings. Yeah, Charlie Hunnam auditioned for Dawson's Creek. No, <laughs> did it say which part? Uh, I don't know. I think. Well, I think if he would have gotten the part of Dawson, that would have ruined his career. Oh God, yeah. Although James Vanderbeek has kind of. I don't want your laugh. Wasn't in that. That was in Varsity Blues. Ooh, ooh, that's actually sports. Varsity Blues is an underrated movie. I think it's fantastic. It, it's good. I loved it. I enjoyed it. It's no. It's no. Remember the Titans. I I, I give it a a, a tan. <laughs> tan. 
No, I wouldn't give it it's a It's a strip club, man. I'm here to work. No, I wouldn't give it a 10. Nope. Tweeter, you think you're going to enjoy prison? What? Oh. <laughs> nice. Ah. All right, so speaking of football, Mankato, I'm going. You're going. Everybody's going. It's going to be a good time. Um, I might not be going. What? Why not? Just because. Stuff. Life. Is this, is this come back to you, the debate of you having a vagina or not? No! Oh, okay. Stop it right now. I did good in Mankato last year. Is this because... Damn good. Are, are you not getting a press pass? No, that's not true. Don't they know what great things you've done? And now how good you look in a sundress? Nice. And how great of an interviewer you are? I'm so glad that the how great I look in a sundress came before. What a, what a great uh, interview. Well, you don't lead with strength. <clears throat> you got to soften oh. them up a little bit. There you go. No, I have some medical stuff going on, so I'm not sure I'm going to make it down there. Now, is this like some sort of contagion thing? No. I had major surgery 15 months ago. Yeah. Um, I had uh, abdominal hernia, hernia surgery, and they basically meshed my entire abdomen. And so now we are 15 months out, and I'm still, I'm still in pain. Like, I'm in pain every day. So tomorrow I go see the doctor, the surgeon, and figure out what we're going to do about this because I can't continue to live like this. And so I just think I kind of need to take it easy. And um, I don't know. I mean, I could certainly change my mind depending on what I find out tomorrow. But I, uh, there's, I suspect that there might be another surgery up ahead. So, yeah. And I'd be sad to miss it because it was so much fun. Like, it was one of the best things I've ever done in my life. So but, you, um, you're not going. Ted's not going. <clears throat> the hell am I even going for now? Well, because Eric will be down there and Arif will be down there. I mean, there's going to be plenty of people down there. I don't know. Will there be people in the stands, though? I mean, it's kind of a down year the Vikings are coming into. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're 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 lucky that they go like, you know, oh, what? 15 and three 1. And, 3 and 13 or, you know, something like that. I mean, come We're on. We're still having be- fun at 15 and 1. Except we all remember the last time we went 15 and 1. Yeah, we don't want to go 15 and 1. Yeah. That was ugly. It was very painful. Was it 2009, 12 and 4? I think. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. Because the Saints were 13 and 3. And I, I remember we dropped a couple of games down the stretch, which kind of pissed me off because we would have won that game if it was in the dome. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. And and that was painful. Um, But I did see, I think it was, what was it, Sports Illustrated? I don't know. One of the big media entities put out like a the they ranked the coaches yeah and like zimmer was rated like 25th or something or 23rd i'm like really like i I couldn't even believe it i mean i know he's only had one year but the amazing things he's done in one year definitely deserves to be higher than in the you know i I can kind of see why him being so low because it wasn't really tested in like high pressure spots where he had to make key decisions down the stretch and manage the clock well and manage the game. Uh, he was never really pressed in that spot. Well, I, I guess Buffalo and then, no, we, we know how Buffalo turned out. Speaking of Chad Greenway, uh, I, I also, I did not bring up fourth and 20 to Chad because I'm a nice person, but, um, and, and I do feel from a local angle, we do have a bit of the rose color glass half full perspective, and as like national people, they don't watch every Vikings game. They're not here. They're not keeping up with uh, the daily uh, press releases, reports uh, from Winter Park. Where as we see the growth and development, as why you know, like Teddy Bridgewater in Andy Benoit or Andy Benoit's rankings was you know, very far down the list, very very low as it were. And it was kind of funny. Andy ben, uh, Benoit or ben, Benoit, wherever you pronounce his name, I don't really care, uh, was the guy who. Threw a lot of shade on women's sports and then got mm-hmm. some flack for that. Uh, in Minnesota, he got way more heat for ranking Teddy Bridgewater like in the 20s as a quarterback. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, in the pitchforks were out, baby. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're we're pretty defensive as a as a uh, as a fan base. Vikings fans are very defensive of Teddy, which I I enjoy. But at the same time, half of you people wanted Johnny football. It's like, you know. Come on now. You're now you're on his side. Okay, fine. He's our quarterback. You're going to throw your support behind that. That's great. 
But at the same time, a year ago, you know, whatever, you, you guys wanted Johnny football. By the way, Ted Glover was one of them. I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. I love that Twitter has a search feature because one day, <laughs> like one night I was bored and I looked up uh, Ted's uh, Johnny football tweets and I retweeted him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Di, you are never going to let me live that down, are you? And I'm like, nope, I'm really not. Sorry. Well, see, the thing is, like, uh, we didn't know that Johnny was going to go for, so far south and Teddy was going to go so far north. Like, overall, uh, I had a lot of faith in Teddy, and I really wanted him here. And getting him at 32 was even more icing on the cake because we can pay him less and we get that beautiful fifth-year option. But the people jumping on the Teddy hype train when he came in so underrated or undervalued, it's kind of like when you discover a, a nice hole in the wall restaurant which cranks out awesome food and it's a great place and all of a sudden it, it blows up and becomes like a popular spot and you're like, damn it, I was here first. But the food doesn't change. I mean, we can all right. enjoy g- uh, great food now, great service, and it's beautiful. Uh, but there's still a little bit inside where you're like, hmm, I was on to this first. I feel like that happens with bands a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you get the you get the... Everyone just you find a band, you, they're you know blowing up. You love them; they're great, and then like everybody else discovers them, and suddenly they're like mainstream. And like, like I, I was a we- well, whatever. I was a Weezer fan before it was cool. <laughs> oh my God, we're Teddy Bridgewater hipsters. Die. We are. Oh wow. We, we liked Teddy before it was cool. I don't know if I can deal with that. Like I, I might have to do some soul searching, Andy, about that because that's. I have a feeling about hipsters. So my husband and I were kidless for 4th of July, and we went down to St. Anthony, Maine. Actually, we went to Nye's Polonaise Room for dinner, which was cool because uh, we had never been there. Did you leave the kids in the car? Windows up? <laughs> no, they were with their grandparents. Oh. We, are, we are responsible parents for the most part. Um, and so we went to Nye's, and then we went to uh, St. Anthony, Maine. We were going to watch the fireworks there, and, um, like, every place is booked. Like, you can't get a seat and whatever and whatever, and we were sitting at – we were sitting at this one place um, waiting for waiting for the fireworks. And it was like, we look around and it's like, we are wall to wall hipster here. We are like eyeballs up in hipsters. It was, I'm like, I don't think I can hang out in, in Northeast again. It's like, it was completely skinny and, jeans, uh, oh. like retro boat shoes or Converse. Eye, um, the obviously thick horn glasses, the, the, the the beards and like the the mustaches that curl up so slightly and then this afternoon i took the kids down to the pool at our uh at our townhouse unit and um there were like four hipsters there and that was it that was the only and then they're like 20 something and they're the only people at the pool and like i walk up with my two kids and they're looking like oh great so we walk in and my kids are like you know jumping around and splashing and they're like i mean it was just their they're disgust at me bringing my children to the pool where, mm-hmm. you know, we have every right to be was just, it was unbelievable. I gave my kids water guns. They were doing cannonballs. It was just I'm like, you know, try not to splash the cool people, but you know, if they get a little wet, you know, you know, okay. they, they tweeted about it. They live tweeted the whole thing. You know, this, <laughs> this woman brings her horrible children down to the pool. I got water in my PBR. Yeah. Which really sucks because PBR is a very solid beer. But they ruined it. It is not a solid beer. It's a terrible beer. It's a good beer. Uh, you get a 30 pack for like four, 13, 14 bucks. <laughs> Heck yeah. No. All right. So, not, not to close on a racial note, but you ever notice that? All right. So, there is for female hipsters, there could be white, there could be black, there could be Asian, there could be. Um, the other one, other races, whatever. There's only white male hipsters. Yeah, no. Oh, well, I mean, I think it's an overly white thing. Yeah, well. I mean, it, I really kind of do. It, it, do you see a lot of female Asian hipsters, which is uh, pretty all right? <laughs> nice. <laughs> I've actually never dated an Asian girl, and being Asian... Uh, and being married now, that's one of my random regrets, but not really. You know what I mean? Because I'm very happily married and have a kid now. And who is an Asian girl, so I can never look at them the same. But 
I, I'm like the only male who's went to a four year public college institution who didn't date an Asian. Is there a reason? Like, do you like am, just you like my self loathing? <laughs> I don't know. I was just curious. I, know, it, it, I think it's a whole nature versus nurture thing because I you know, grew up around all white chicks, so it's probably that developed my palate for female tastes. Sure, yeah, I get it. I mean, I, I've i never dated an Asian guy. Do you want to? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good note to go out on. Uh, anything exciting for you coming up? No, not really. Fine. <laughs> Um, let's see. Purple for the win. Um, I don't have a guest lined up for next Monday, but I'll find someone. Uh, in the archives right now, we got uh, Greenway talking about uh, football, family, and uh, his foundation lead the way. Uh, doing some great stuff. Teamed up with Vikings Territory, Daily Norseman, Vikings Journal, uh, the Viking Age, and Vikings Corner for the hashtag More Than Words campaign, raising some money. By the way, Vikings Territory, we're kicking your guys' ass at the Daily Norseman. Uh. Uh-uh. It's an ass kicking, and you guys have a bigger reach than us because you got SB Nation. But we're kicking ass. Uh, and then what else? Uh, Venzel was on Monday. Talk about some good stuff about Baltimore. He's never seen the wire, and uh, hey, he's in Baltimore. Yeah, all that good stuff. And some random Vikings tidbits as well. Um, but other than that, we're done. Follow us on Twitter at Andy Must Die. Uh, I'm at Andy Carlson Show, and dies at Die Murphy MN. Uh, I tweeted at Die Murphy once. At Di Murphy, um, she was not you. <laughs> no, I am. No, that would not be Do me. Do you know who I she have, is? I have no idea. Oh. Huh. Well, you should see if she's squatting on her or wants to sell it. I, yeah, well, I don't know. Because what if you I move like, out of state? I am never moving out of state. I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be stuck in this frozen nightmare for my entire life. I thought, Except for when I go, like, be a snowbird. But see, oh, you're moving closer and closer downtown. Eventually, you just be all Skyway. That's okay. I could deal with that. And my my anky joints and my heart pre- heart pressure medication. Heart pressure is not a real thing. Anyways, uh, subscribe to us <laughs> on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, all the good places, and the website as always, AndyMustDie dot com. Uh, but yeah, we're gone. Uh, I'm Andy Carlson, and she is Die Murphy. Amen. Don't forget the MN. Otherwise, Di Murphy, MN. Otherwise, at Di Murphy is going to get kind of pissed. Uh, thanks for listening. Have an awesome week. Uh, enjoy the rest of summer, and we'll see you in Mankato. Well, I will. Di won't, because she's a hater. Oh, well, maybe. We'll see. The music was created and produced by Deeb. To hear more of his tracks, check out soundcloud.com forward slash Deeb. We needed to get this right.